With artists like King Harris and Coyla Ray constantly making headlines recently, I thought it would be a great time to discuss hip hop's Nepo Baby problem. Typically, rappers dream of the day they have finally made it out of the mud to make sure that their kids can have a better life than what was afforded to them. So what happens when these same children that were born with gold spoons in their mouths try to make it on their own, while acting like their parents aren't a big part of the reason they made it in the first place? It's your boy Luesta, and if you like weekly video documentaries like this one, make sure to subscribe. Let's start with someone whose father's empire might be crumbling at the moment, but has left his son with some massive shoes to try and fill. It's gotta be crazy, and since we talking about King, it's gotta be crazy in the bloodline, and I'll ask King this as well. Just in the bloodline, is there an expectation yeah. of what he has to do? I'm hardcore. On I can imagine. You know what I'm saying, like, like I'm gonna be honest. It's, it's almost like affecting our relationship. King, you jump know. on over here real quick, fam. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, my son, the heir to the throne, oh, up man. next, uh -huh. and one of the freshest, dopest, newest MCs in the game. His real name is Christian Combs. He goes by King Combs. Christian Combs is one of Diddy's four kids with the on-again, off-again love of his life, Kim Porter. Ever since he started dropping music in 2016, he's been insistent that he'll be the one to carry on Bad Boys' legacy and try to get his father's blessing. I know I got big shoes to fill. Yeah. And I know what I have to do. And the day I wanted to, I brought it up to my pops that I really wanted to take it serious and be a rapper, entrepreneur. He told me like, yo, you can't do this and be playing around with it. You really got to focus and be about this. Like, you can't play at all. Like. Since then, Combs has insisted that he's the man to bring the once great label into the next generation because he's the heir to the throne. Bad boy, that's my life. That's the legacy I was born into. I've always been a bad boy for life. I want to take the legacy to the next level and make a name for myself. Despite the fact that he's grew up in the lap of luxury, Combs has spent much of his career collaborating with street artists ranging from 03 Greedo to Pop Smoke, who he claims he was with the night before he died. He was like, yo, you gotta keep doing what you're doing. You're doing your thing. I see you. You're hard. Combs claims Pop Smoke told him. That's just something that stuck with me because he didn't even have to say that. He didn't have to say anything, and he just made it known that he rocked with me and what I was doing. Whether or not this story is exaggerated, it doesn't change the fact that he got a feature on Pop's first and best received posthumous album, Shoot For The Stars, Aim For The Moon, on the track Diana. Unfortunately, it was on what was easily the worst rated track on the album. Rather than just trashing the song, some people simply weren't buying the fact that Pop would have even signed off on it, and that he was only on the track because of his pops. Uh, I, I think there's a few features on here that wouldn't be on here had Pop been alive. I don't think King Combs would have been on there. Uh, I'm not saying he shouldn't be there. I just, I don't you think that he would have been on there had Pop been alive. Pop. I don't think that record would have been on the <laughs> Smart album, you. period. I think he would have scrapped it. Even though he's got features with everyone from Chris Brown to a boogie with the hoodie, and even his father's girlfriend, Young Miami, King Combs may have the roster on his side to act like a star, but the numbers just don't quite add up. To date, he's still only pulling in under a half a million Spotify listeners per month. And despite this, Combs has still rejected the idea that whatever achievements he's reached had anything to do with what he was born into. Before talking about how much he's putting on for bad boy the next minute. Uh, not really, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown, so you got a big le legacy to fill up too. And right now, bad boy be number one. Let's go, bitch. I feel like I'm blessed. You know, we're gonna take the legacy far further and further. Bad boy to life, New Orleans. Can't stop, won't stop, never stop. Just stop hating, that's it. There has been one real bright spot in his career so far, which is when he briefly topped the hip hop airplay chart, which, if you're unfamiliar, is decided upon by what's getting the most spins on the radio, rather than how much the average listener is streaming it. The song that got him there was titled Can't Stop, Won't Stop with Kodak Black, which not only used one of his dad's favorite catchphrases from back in the day, but samples an old Lil' Kim and Lil' C's track. Still, King Combs celebrated this like it was a platinum record. It's taking over, listen, can't stop, won't stop, Bad boy, we got the song of the summer right now. Number one song. Pop's got R and B. I got hip hop. Just saying to the naysayers. Yeah, you know, it's earned, not given. You know, we're gonna prove it. Proof is in the pudding. 
Still, after the interview dropped, people stayed skeptical of what he could do without his dad's name or catalog. He has no creative voice of his own though. All of his songs are samples or remakes of his dad's. Sir, every song you use is a sample of your dad's. Stop it. He wouldn't have cleared those for anyone else. The privileged want to be unprivileged so bad. His whole career is built on cosplaying as his father. But while one Nepo baby named after royalty is on good terms with his father, and reaping the rewards of using what he built, the same can't necessarily be said for King Harris. The 19 year old son of T.I. and his former R&B star wife Tiny, King basically grew up in front of the whole world. As he appeared alongside his family on the VH1 show T.I. and Tiny, The Family Hustle. But somewhere along the line, he started acting out and behaving like his name carries weight in the streets. So for the past year, he's been making tons of headlines and never for the right reasons. King first popped back up in people's minds when he was seen behaving like a spoiled brat at a Waffle House because they dared to mess up his order. Here. I'm outside. Okay. I'm outside. Come on, shake some. Come on, shake some. Come on, shake some. Hey, get your employees. Get your employees. Almost immediately, he got clowned by the entire world for his entitled ways, and it even led people to look at T.I. and Tiny a little sideways. I don't care what I've done, how much money I've made, how many chart-topping songs I've made. If my son grows up and talks to people like that, I'm a failure. To the embarrassment of T.I. and his wife, this only was the beginning of King trying to act tough online. And things got worse when he responded to an attempted robbery of his family in Colombia. Yeah, boy, they think they gangsters. Boy, come walk these streets, man. This shit get weak. They like, be safe. I'm like, what the f you mean, be safe? That sun go down? Well, I don't know what they got going on over here. As he was constantly trolled for pretending as if he grew up in the trenches, King tried to clear up that he didn't really think he was a thug at all. I mean, people confuse standing on business as you being a thug, a gangster. Uh, I ain't that. I just stand on business principle. I stand on respect, disrespect. That's what I go off of. So it ain't a nigga trying to be hard or gangster. Nah, it's just how I'm raised and what I can take and what I'm not taking. Seen as someone who's basically a self-parody rather than a man to be taken seriously, his rap career hasn't helped things either. Putting out music under the name Kid Saiyan, King labeled himself the new king of the south, but the music hasn't taken off at all. And he's been clowned for his attempts and the gun-toting lyrics in his music. Must have forgot we watched his whole childhood on TV. It's funny someone should mention his upbringing in a lavish area of ATL, because this is clearly a point of insecurity for for King. This desire to be from the hood really boiled over during a recent trip to an Atlanta Falcons game where he and his family got into a very public conflict while they were there. In the process, King tried to say that he only spent his childhood at his grandma's because he wanted to be in the streets, only to get absolutely ethered by his own mom. I don't want to be in these gates. I want to be outside in the neighborhood. That's why I want to be over there. But they don't understand that. I'm going to tell you the reason why he want to be over there. Y'all ready? Because... Eventually manhandled out of the way by his dad after he pushed his mom, Tiny might have just ended her son's rap career before it could even really take off. Cause once it's made known that you had a pacifier until you were out of grade school, there's just no way you're ever gonna be taken seriously. Let alone more successful than your father, who really made it out of Bankhead to become a star. But while King could kiss goodbye to any chance of escaping his dad's shadow, one Nebo baby who's managed to surpass her parents' level of success is Koyla Ray. The daughter of former rapper, the source owner, and noted Eminem victim, Benzino, Koi exploded out of nowhere and initially managed to keep the news that she was related to Zeno under wraps. It wasn't until a Vlad TV interview that the notorious media personality brought it to the public's attention, where Koyla Ray began to downplay how close she and her father were. It made it as if she had a rags to riches story. My dad or whatever, you know, when I, when I got nine and old enough to really start understanding things, money wasn't flowing like how it was. When I moved with my mom, things were different. You know, food stamps, having to work at 16, find a job, um, I dropped out, 10th grade, just really had to just figure life out, you know, and it, and it also humbled me. Throughout her career, Koi, who already has more Billboard hits than her father, including collabs with Nicki Minaj and Lil Durk, has claimed that her dad wasn't really around and that she had to scrape by with everything. We, it was hard to eat. My mom was giving, picking up nickels and dimes. And then, you know, I would see father like, I know whatever, you know, he was even when the love and hip hop 
pop and all kinds of shit was going, but at the same time, I'm like this. Why, how do you get to live this life and we over here struggling? To really rub salt in the wounds, she also suggested that her dad envied her success and that it had strained their relationship. At first, it was rocky because I felt like he couldn't handle my success i felt like it, it did come from an envious place which is okay because he's human mm -hmm. and it's fine alongside benzino claiming that this was the biggest pile of shit he'd ever heard and that he was tired of people pushing a false narrative about who he was and what he's done as a father he's since gone on record to publicly discredit her story about having a scrape and claw in her youth she says she slept in cars queen never slept in no f car that i knew about you know i had my daughter five months out the year I was with her mother until she was nine, and I had her from nine to 16, five months out the year, she'd be with me. She lived with me twice. She lived here in Atlanta with me, and she went to Campbell High School. Like, I was a single dad, and I was taking care of my kids, all my kids, and her two older brothers by two other men that wasn't mine. So when I'm watching this, I'm just looking at somebody, she looked like she's almost brainwashed, you know, like, she ain't never slept in no car and sold drugs and all this. Like, I don't know why she's running with this narrative. Despite occasional attempts at reconciliation, the two just can't get back on the same page ever since she's gotten famous. She's literally even said that she was embarrassed to be his daughter and that she didn't want anyone to know. Over time, Benzino has responded in kind, even mocking her album sales. But despite all of the posturing from both parties, Benzino hasn't been able to hide that the whole situation does get to him. I got thick skin, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm one of them people like, let's just forget it, move forward. I went through a lot, man. And it was hard for me, you know what I'm saying, to be looked upon as it. Like, I've been caught all kinds of shit, but a deadbeat dad? Come on, man. That's my, I love my daughter. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be known as that. Like, I don't care what people think, but that hurt me. That's, that's my daughter. I raised her. When people say I hate her, Coy's career and jealous and all this, that shit's like, man, like, it's evil, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Because my love is huge for that. For that little girl, man. That's my little girl, man. You know, people see us arguing on the internet. It ain't nothing that I'm proud of. Was she, it hard, though, not speaking to her during that period? Of course. This whole thing was one of the worst things I've been through in my life. I've been through hell. While Koi has claimed that Benzino wasn't there to provide for her, one person that certainly never had that issue is Jaden Smith. Whether you know him as an actor, rapper, artist, or the guy who wore a Batman costume to Kanye and Kim's wedding, Jaden Smith has had every advantage afforded to him. As the son of one of the most beloved individuals in pop culture, or at least he used to be, as he completely ruined his reputation after slapping Chris Rock, everyone knows Jaden Smith is the epitome of what being a spoiled kid is like. And even popular celebrities such as Donald Glover essentially called him a Nebo baby before that phrase was even invented. He is the first rich black kid, really, like of royalty, where people are like, you're Will Smith's dad. He's the most visible example yeah. of it. He has room to fail. That's what it is. like, And it's safe to say that from time to time, he has done just that. At certain points, he's even managed to make himself into a laughing stock in ways that other people wouldn't recover from. The star of films like Karate Kid and The Pursuit of Happiness alongside his father, it initially seemed like Jaden was destined to be a major movie star. But over time, he decided to try out music. I didn't receive any intriguing offers, so I figured, why not explore my own path instead? Launched with two self-released EPs before he signed a deal with Rock Nation, Jayden Jaden's rap career hasn't been exactly critically acclaimed, including his debut album Sire, with famous music critics such as Fantano stating, Like in general, this record is 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 fake deep. There's just too much filler. There's too much awful moments. There's too much completely drab, boring, average, run-of-the-mill, trendy, thoughtless, and middle-brow songs on this thing for it to truly be entertaining and worthy of the runtime. But while his music being seen as pretty mundane is one thing, it's how out of touch he is with reality that really cements the idea that he's everything wrong with the Nepo baby generation. Across Twitter and in interviews, Jaden has proved that he thinks he's a great thinker, when most of the time, he's getting clowned for his ego. We don't think a lot of music out there is cool. Jaden once said about himself and his sister, Willow, so we make our own music. We don't have any song that we like to listen to on the PCH by any other artist, 
you know? A self-proclaimed icon, Jaden has reached a point where whenever he opens his mouth, he just seems more and more out of touch with reality. I am very happy that I spent my childhood with more adults than I did with kids my right. own age. Because I was picking up more things from adults than I were from kids my own age. I'm just like, dude, like, oh my god, like, can we talk about, like, the political and economic state of the world right now? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about what's going on with the environment? Can we talk about other things a man who has the self-belief required to be a star but doesn't have it all figured out he once suggested that some of the biggest artists in the world were threatened by him during an interview with complex i always felt like little homie before and that allowed me in all of their circles said Jaden. but now that i'm on the charts next to them i'm not really little homie anymore it's more like you can't hang out with us anymore we didn't know you were making an album this whole time we thought you were just little homie giving us free water and shit you're not really cool with us anymore forged by a childhood where he he got everything he ever wanted and never heard anything but positivity. Jaden is at a point where he's proven to everyone that he is exactly what they assumed he was. A deluded rich kid, but in some ways it's hard to blame him. This kid has clearly lived in a bubble his whole life, where he was told how brilliant he is and with all the money in the world to help him, you can see why he turned out this way. With his mom Jada now public enemy number one and Will's reputation tarnished by everything that's gone on, now would be the perfect time for Jaden to finally escape his parents' shadows. But unless he moves fast, he might be seen as just another Nepo baby who couldn't accomplish more than the ones who brought them into the world because they've never actually had to fight or struggle for anything they've ever gotten.